Hi, this is Lisa Prado. We're here in downtown Manhattan in front of Casa Mano with Chef Anthony Sousa. Uh, Anthony's here with us today to tell us all about his inspiration behind Casa Mano, uh, the Spanish influence, and his history about the restaurant. So, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Of course. So, Anthony, um, what would be your advice for new young chefs coming into the industry? Uh, I'd probably give them kind of the advice that I gave myself when I got into the industry. Um, I, I came from a culinary school in New York City and okay. I was really eager to begin with and it's kind of the best time for you to get out there and work at some of the harder restaurants uh, right. for some of like the tougher chefs. Um, I, I would just say go out there and do it and like keep your keep 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 an open mind about it. It's going to be hard, it's going to be tough, it's going to get better um, but for the most part um, get into Get into a kitchen that's going to challenge you. That's going to definitely make you work hard and, mm -hmm. and push yourself, and everything else will fall into place. It's all about challenging yourself, right? You I have mean, a that's the really whole industry good story is about. about how you came into this. Um, how you started off as a a prepper, basically on, a prep cook. Yeah. yeah, prep cook is what it's called. All those young chefs out there. He has an awesome story where he just came into Casa de Mano as the prep cook, and now five, six years later, yeah. you are the the chef of the restaurant, running the show. So, can you tell us a little bit about that? So, so younger chefs coming into the industry can hear your story and see how you made this all happen. Yeah, I mean, you can't really be thick-headed from your first day. I got here. I was just not desperate, but. I fell in love with this place. It was something that um, right away they had a, a food that appealed to me. Mm -hmm. I had a background in, with Spanish food and yeah. family in Spain. Yeah, family in Spain. Yeah, right? I have a couple cousins that visit all the time and uh, aunts and uncles. Um, but basically, I, I just wanted to do something at this restaurant, and I was kind of relentless about it. I didn't give up. I spoke with the chef, Andy. I, I, I just like talked his ear off and said, "Just give me anything." I know you have dishwashers. I won't. I would have done that, but it was basically. You know, you can start at croquetas, you can start, you know, working lunch shifts. Yeah. And you just can't say no. You can't ever say no to a chef or a restaurant That's if you're like that into it and you just have yeah. like this this passion for for something that you really believe. So You were determined. You were like, I'm coming in whether I have to wash the dishes, mop the floor, and then yeah. and then you worked your way up and and now it were, it's it's easier at a place like this, it's a smaller kitchen where, you know, you can actually move around and move up. Yeah. And that might not always be the case if there's 20 or 30 fellow chefs same yeah. age as you, the yeah. same talents so as you. What made you stand out? How did you go? Because not everyone can I just do that. Not every up. chef um, starting out is going from the prep cook to, you know, the top chef of the restaurant in just five years' time. Yeah. What was your story? How did you? You just at a place like this, you just want to do it all, help any way you can, yeah. and stay late. Come yeah. in on days off. That's great. Whatever you have to do, if there's like something broken that he's fixing, if there's a dish that you've never seen or touched yeah. before. You better learn how to do it, and he, I think just it just kind of right like in there, right? it caught everybody's whatever eye. You can do. Yeah, it was just like I asked the right questions. I, I bugged people when they were like, you know, I bugged the sous chefs and the chefs at that time, where I was just like talking to them, asking them questions, writing things down. Yeah. When they saw that, that I actually cared. Okay. That was even that showed something. It like just showed, keep a little it book. It showed your interest and yeah. driven. That's awesome. Yeah, and it was just I was having a good time. Like if if, if you look like you're having fun in a place. Yeah. They're going to keep you, you know, if That's you're... That's such a good point. That's so. such a good point. you got to love what you do, and obviously if you're going into the culinary world, it's got to be something you're passionate about. Yeah. Because, you know, working your way up in those ranks could probably be an arduous process, but if you're relentless, like Anthony over here, you can make it, and um, his story is a true inspiration. So come down to Casa de Mano and check it out. <laughs> so... Anthony, food is ever evolving. It's always changing. And how do you feel your position in the industry as compared to the rest? Um, I definitely in this city, in New York City. I'm at first grateful just to be a chef here at okay. a restaurant as busy and well known as someplace like Casa Mono. But I, I just think like living in this city, working in the city, it, it teaches you everything about constantly changing, constantly evolving. Even outside of my job, I mean, mm -hmm. I have to you're constantly moving from one apartment to another to fit your needs. Like it's just That's one of those true. cities where it's like you're, every year you're a different person. Every year this yeah. restaurant's a different place and if it wasn't, I, I don't think we'd be packed every single day like it is right now, so it's. Yeah, you're always mixing it up too. Yeah. You, you mentioned that 
it's a seasonal restaurant. Super seasonal. Super seasonal, micro seasonal, he told me before. Yeah. Um, where you're always changing up the menu. So do you think that doing something like that is really making you stand out in the industry? Yeah, I mean, even at the restaurant, I did the, the guys that I work with, the, the, the girls who work in the kitchen, it's just, if you don't keep them into it, you're mm -hmm. not gonna be into it. So we, we yeah. don't change the entire menu, like a lot of places, maybe daily or once a week, but right. Like we were talking about before, there's if there's like a, an ingredient that's only around for a little bit of time, mm -hmm. or a dish that we might want to try for a little bit, yeah. it's just you just gotta embrace any change and embrace anything that's gonna keep, keep us into change. it and them into it. Yeah, that's yeah. great. So you're probably always looking for new things. To, it's it's tiring. To I'm get I'm exhausted just but keeping up with it. You're but passionate about it, yeah. so you 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 know I'm sure that you couldn't stop if you tried. Probably not. I'm not trying, but. <laughs> Good. All right. <laughs>